Okay, now question number six from the International A-Level Pure Mathematics 3P3 specimen paper. Here we have a question which has got something to do with modulus functions and also trig functions. So you've got y is equal to the modulus of sine x plus 1. Um, and we've got it drawn between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so this is the function that's drawn here. It says the point A, the point P with coordinates A, B lies on the curve and is shown in figure 1. Give, given that the gradient of the curve at P is minus a half, so the gradient of the curve at P is equal to minus a half, Okay, we've got to find the coordinates of, or the exact value of A and the exact value of B. So the exact value of A and the exact value of B. So you give them without any rounding in terms of thirds or pi or whatever it comes out as. Now, first of all, we've got this modulus function. So we've got to first figure out which part of the graph refers to the positive part and which part refers to the negative part. Okay, now we know that y equals sine x will look like something like this. Okay, between 0 and 2 pi. You have pi here, you have 2 pi here, and so on. Okay, now if you were to do y equals the modulus of sine x, which is the first thing that happens when you do this, okay, this is the modulus of sine x, every part of the part graph which is below the x axis will now reflect above the x axis. So these negative parts, this negative part will go like this. So we see we get a shape very similar to what this is. But then what's happened is the whole thing has been raised up by one unit. So this shape, instead of going through 0, 0, it's going to go through 0, 1. And instead of the, the highest value being 1, it's now going to become 2. Okay, so we have here 2 over there. So basically that's what's happened to the shape. So we can say that this is the part that's the normal part. This is y equals sine x plus 1. But this part is like y equals minus sine x plus 1. Because, but because between pi and 2 pi, which is here and here, the curve would normally have this type of shape. So it's been reflected upwards. That's why it's minus sine x plus 1. Okay, so we've worked out that p is in this region where the graph is y equals sine x plus 1. So at, at, p, at p, we can say the equation of the curve is y equals minus sine x plus 1. Now what we have to do is we have to uh, find the gradient function because we also know at p, at p, the gradient of the curve is equal to minus a half. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, let's find the gradient function dy dx. That's going to give us, well, the differential of sine x is cosine x, but this is a minus sine x, so it's going to be minus cosine x for this. And plus one, of course, when you differentiate a constant, comes zero. So now I can say, therefore, you know, as we know that dy dx at p is equal to minus a half, we can say minus cosine a half, sorry, minus cosine x is equal to minus a half. And therefore, we can say that the cosine of x is equal to a half. Okay, so we got to find the value of x, so we're going we're gonna to take the inverse cosine of both sides of this equation, and we'll end up with, now, what we've got to be careful is of is our value of x, uh, of the angle, this p, lies between pi, okay, and 2 pi. It lies between pi and 2 pi, all right, that's p. Okay, so our calculator answer when I do if inverse cosine of a half will give me the answer in the first quadrant. It's positive, so it'll be there. Or you can think about it as in terms of the curve, the cosine curve, it will go like this, like that. Okay, so it's going to give me um, the cosine of a half, it's going to go up like this, okay, that will be 2 pi. It's going to basically give me, let me just draw that better actually, just so I'll make it clearer for you guys. Okay, one second. I'll draw it up here. So the cosine curve between 0 and 2 pi will look something like this. Okay, so the, the answer in the calculator is going to give me an answer over here. But our what we're looking for is the answer over there. We need this curve. This is pi over, well, we know that it's going to be pi over 3. I know it's going to be pi over 3. All right, so the inverse cosine of a half is pi over 3. So x is equal to pi over 3. If you do that in calculate in radian mode, you have to be in radian mode because we're dealing with differentiation. Any calculus and uh, trig functions must be, you must use radians. And also in the question, it's got the limits in terms of 
pi, so we know we must be, use, be using radian mode. So it's pi over 3, where cosine x equals a half. And the other angle, okay, which shares, shares the same cosine ratio, is always 360 minus that. So it's going to be 2 pi minus pi over 3. So the actual answer, this will help us get the answer, but that's not our answer. It's 2 pi minus pi over 3, which is 6 pi over 3 minus pi over 3, which is 5 pi over 3. That's the point, the x value of p. Okay, the x value of p is over here, when x is equal to 5 pi over 3. Okay, um, you see, if, if it was that the curve didn't have the modulus sign, then it would go, this particular curve would go like this. And there would be a point here, which is pi over 3, which also would have the same gradient at p. Okay, because the curve would go like this. If, it, if there was no modulus sign, if it was just y equals sine x minus sine x uh, plus 1, y equals minus sine x plus 1 will look like, look like this. Okay, if you just continue the same curve, all right. So there's another point here where which will have the same gradient as p. That's why we got this answer. But our curve doesn't exist there because we're at this point in this particular curve. It's actually y equals sine x plus one, not minus sine x plus one. So anyway, um, so that's the x value of the point p. So we know that when x is equal to five pi over three. We know that y is minus sine x, so minus sine of 5 pi over 3, and then plus 1. And the sine of pi over 3, okay, the sine of, of the 5 pi over 3 is over here somewhere, right? So the sine of 5 pi, so we've actually found this angle here. This is the angle we're looking for. So the sine of 5 pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, okay? So this is going to be y, it's actually, and it's going to be in this quadrant where cosine is... Um, where cosine is positive, that sine will be negative there, so it's going to be minus minus root 3 over 2, which is root 3 over 2, plus 1. I mean, if you just stick that in your calculator, you're going to get the answer anyway. Okay, you'll end up with that answer, which I'll, I'll show you. So you've got sine of 5 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, and plus 1. Close the bracket plus one and actually it's a minus the curve is minus uh, minus at this point okay the equation of the curve at the point where we the gradient is minus sine five pi over three plus one and that gives you two plus root three over two which is the same as this because this will be two over two so two plus root three over two okay so the answer you can just write in that form if you want to two plus root three over two okay so that's the y coordinate of p so the coordinates of p therefore are the x coordinate is 5 pi over 3 and the y coordinate is 2 plus root 3 over 2 so that's the x and y coordinate of the point p all right so now part b okay so now for part b it says a straight line with positive gradient passes through p Given that the straight line intersects the curve at exactly three distinct points, find the range of values of the gradient of this line. So a, a straight line with positive gradient passes through P. Okay, so now that means it must slope this way, not that way. Okay, let me make it a bit thinner. All right, so it passes through the point P. So it's not going to go in this direction. Okay, it's going to go in this direction. So... We want this line, whoops, we want this line to have a positive gradient and we want it to pass through the point P. All right, and we also want it to have three uh, distinct points, three distinct solutions. So it will, it will intersect the curve at exactly three distinct points. Let me leave that point over here. Now, so that means if it goes like this, for example, how many points is it going to be passing through? It's going to be passing through one, two, three, four, including P. So that's not good enough. Uh, and if we go higher than that, okay, at that point, for example, there's going to be one, two, three, but if it touches at that point, it's not, it doesn't want to click there. But anyway, just imagine it's passing at that point, but it'll have a negative gradient there. Okay. We want it to have a positive gradient. So it has to be going lower than this, lower than horizontal. So at this point, you see there's four solutions, including P, one, two, three, four. So we want it to have three solutions. So this is a limit for it to have three solutions. The upper limit, you could say, or the, the lower limit of the gradient, so the, the smallest gradient. Okay. Um, 
in terms of the uh, yeah so so that 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 is the point where it's going to have if it's just below that point there you're going to have one two three solutions and if you carry on so let me just leave that line there and let me copy and paste okay so i have put it on the same point okay now the the other point where it's going to have three it's going to continue having three solutions here you have three solutions see p that point and that point until you reach this point over here at this point there's only two solutions so uh, one when you're above this point and when you're below this point okay when the when the line passes through p and this point here and it passes through this point here that's where you're going to have Anywhere between those points where the, the line passes through is going to have three distinct solutions. So let me call this point Q. And this is the point 0, 1. And let's call, call this point R. And this is the point, well, this is pi over 2. No, sorry, this is pi. Pi over 2 is over there. This is pi. Okay, this is the point. So this is, this is the point pi. And this is also 1. Okay, so when it passes through these uh, two points, it's going to have um, three distinct solutions. So our limits for the gradient has to be between, for basically the gradient of this line and the gradient of that line. So let's find the gradient of the line between P and Q first. The gradient of P and Q. Okay, let me write it like this. The gradient of the line PQ. So the gradient of PQ. Let's see what that gives us. So we got the change in y, which is 2 plus root 3 over 2 minus 1, divided by the change in x, which is 5 pi over 3. So this is like 2 plus root 3 over 2 minus 2 over 2. So the 2's cancel out. So you're left with root 3 over 2, um, divided by 5 pi over 3, which is root 3 over 2 times 3 over 5 pi which is 3 root 3 over 10 pi so that's the gradient of the line pq and then we got the gradient of the line between um, uh, p p and r so the gradient of the line between p and r okay we've got the change in y which is 2 root 3 minus 1 again 2 root 3 minus 1 okay so you have 2 times root 3 uh, sorry not 2 root 3 2 plus root 3 over 2 minus 1 again okay so you'll get the same answer at the top so 2 plus root 3 over 2 minus 1 divided by you're going to have this time 5 pi over 3 minus pi okay 5 pi over 3 minus pi this time the change in x is this between these two so therefore this is going to give us uh, root 3 over 2 divided by this is like uh, 5 pi over 3 minus 3 pi over 3 which is going to give me 2 pi over 3 so you end up with root 3 over 2 times 3 over 2 pi which is 3 root 3 over 4 pi so we're going to have the limit of m okay the it says the the values of the gradient of this line okay it has to have a positive gradient right so it's between these two values here it's between the gradient is going to be between the lower value which is 3 root 3 over 10 pi and 3 root 3 over 4 pi okay um, you don't put the equal sign you don't put the equal sign here because when they are equal if, if I'm if I make this equal here there will be only two solutions and if I make it equal to this line here there will be one two three four solutions so it's between what's lower than this and, and upper and higher than that okay so that that's the value of the gradient for which there will be three distinct solutions and it has a positive gradient that passes through p okay so there's the answer to part b of that question